Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simon's like diamonds back again. Got a whole cast of characters here on the podcast, and we're actually streaming live on the FB. It's Facebook for the layperson. For young kids, yeah, Facebook still exists. Not just Instagram and TikTok. What are, what else? Why? What are the other cool apps besides uh, those two? I think you co- you about covered it. You got Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Uh, Facebook's starting to kind of lay down a little, but you know hit the main ones there's something called twitter and that's getting getting a lot of attention now uh and there's also some called smart fishing spots a new app coming to insiders very very soon we're looking here at the last week of this month so it will happen in may and we'll be looking for really any insider member who wants to beta test this and get in help you know get there's always going to be some bugs in the beginning as many times as we go through it and think it's working flawlessly there'll be something that or even just an idea, hey, can we do this? Can can we use this to export, you know, to my unit on my, on my boat? And the answer is yes. We're we're actually experimenting with all that right now. It is it's crazy. Uh, already getting oh there, Luke's holding it up. Already a little bit of buzz from uh, some people out there in the industry saying uh, we're shaking things up. Uh, if you missed one of the prior podcasts and or YouTube videos on this new app called Smart Fishing Spots. It is all in one. We've basically taken every single app you would possibly need from weather and wind and radar and sonar and some really cool now underwater views and put it all into one app. So it was a funny a question came up in the in the Facebook group is like, how many different apps do you use for fishing? And it was four was the minimum and 20 was the maximum. And we've taken what I believe almost all 20 of those and put them into one place with a few extra additions that no one else has uh, is seen. And, and it will be an app app like in the app store, uh, not day one. At first, it, it's going to be uh, more of a progressive app, a mobile based based version and the desktop version. And uh, once we get all the bugs out and all your feedback and all the cool features you want, then we're going to build it out in the, in the official app. Insiders only. Uh, it will be free to insiders. And that is why we are going to be raising the price of the Insider Club here before you know it. So that's a quick little intro as we wait to get some people on. Can you guys see? I'm, uh, I'm just staring at your lovely faces. Uh, are there some people on the Facebook live version? Well, hot diggity dog. Well, here's all we ask of you is let us know why you think fishing is so addictive or addicting. Uh, love to hear your feedback. We've got, I think this came up, Tony, was it someone, uh, someone asked you that question. I think you were the one who initially tagged me. I was like, Oh man, that, that would be cool to get on the podcast. And I'll just kind of talk about why fishing is, so important to us and why it's a, a addicting and why we just keep going back to it. Yep. One of the members in the community asked, and it was a pretty good question. Got a lot of uh, engagement on there. It's pretty interesting what people, people were saying. Well, we'll start with you. What, why is fishing so addicting? So I think um, me and Wyatt probably have pretty similar answers. You know, I, I'm by no means a psychologist, but took a lot of psychology back in college and whenever you do something and you succeed at it you want to keep going back for more even if you don't succeed at it you know some some types of chemicals in the brains are released and it just keeps you wanting to come back for more and I I think why you could probably explain it a little bit better not with that hat on he can't (laughs) hey man the the hat the hat this 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 is this hat's going to come up and why fishing is uh is so addicting as well um I think my answer around it revolves more about, you know, in our lives as, as, you know, just people, we, we have a lot of chaos, whether it's just your average job, stuff going on with family, there's just a lot going on. And fishing is kind of similar in that you have so many different variables that you don't have control of. It's chaos. You've got different tides, winds, you don't know whether fish are going to cooperate and fishing gives you the opportunity to be, the master of chaos to line up all the variables. There is a defined success in catching a fish that, you know, landing it and having it, that's you taking all those variables into account and lining everything up. Right. And to have control of chaos, I think brings like a sense of happiness and peace. And, you know, those, those chemicals that, that Tony was talking about. Um, I think that gets released when that, that happens because you go out there and there's no, guarantee of success there and it, it, every time you go out you don't know whether you're going to get on a hot bite or you're going to have to grind for fish so it just gives you the opportunity to go out there and, and be the master of chaos and, and line up all those variables and i think 
that's what makes it so addicting is that in our lives, we don't normally get that opportunity. And, and when we do, it's, it's awesome in, in normal life, but fishing, we can go out there and, and do that every time if we really know what we're doing. And it, it does bring a sense of peace for sure. Good. Yeah, I, I love the clean slate aspect of it, you know, and let's just take sports, right? If you lose a few games in a row and you're getting close to the playoffs, you have to go back and start winning just to catch up to get back to where you were. Sometimes you're uh, you're cleaning up the mess, if you will, or the aftermath of all the horribleness that happened the day before if you had a really tough day, whereas fishing, you have a bad day. The next day, it's a completely clean slate completely new like the day before didn't even uh, happen but i i'm just competitive I, I like to win and when luke and i we were out just yesterday you know we're, i mean we're we're sitting there jabbing each other and you know and and and, and in a great way right i mean it's 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 so much fun to fish with friends or brothers or whoever it is and and i uh, have that competitive side but at the same point know that even if it is a slower day man it's just so fun to be out there and not have to worry about all the other distractions going on in life some point there might be advertisements in the sky and we're forced to just see them wherever we are or through some, you know, crazy lenses, some Apple lenses or something. But at least right now I can put my phone away and fish and know that I'm not going to be distracted. And it's just me, the water, and hopefully Amanda redfish. Um, what else, Justin, you're sitting there laughing, Matt and Yak eight rods in the back. What do you guys think? Yeah. Um, the chemical everybody keeps talking about is dopamine, right? And I read somewhere that dopamine is the reward molecule. So anytime you accomplish something, it's, it's the aspect that gets you addicted to anything. So whenever you're successful at something, you come back and do it. That's kind of why gambling is addictive, right? Because when you see all the pretty lights go off and you win 20 bucks, you're like, woohoo, I did it. So in that same thing, doesn't matter whether it's a 14, 15 inch trout or it's a 40 inch redfish. When you, when you catch a fish, and, you know, it's your first time doing it or second or hundredth time doing it, that dopamine flares up and it becomes addictive. So you go back and you do it over and over and you want to replicate that feeling all the time. Um, dopamine pops up when you walk down, you know, in the aisle when you're graduating, when you ask that hot girl in class on a date and she's like, yeah, I'll go with you. You're like, woohoo, dopamine. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Um, I think that translates over into fishing. And I think that's why a lot of us are. Did you, did you so, read about that in a book as well? That hot date part of that happened? Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how to ring your dopamine bell by justin ritchie <laughs> um so yeah i mean i agree with with wyatt and tony like it's uh we enjoy being successful at something we are hardwired to want to do something that we feel we are good at um and going out and catching a fish is affirmation for yourself that you can go and do something prepare for it just like sports, but you're doing it by yourself. Nobody's judging you other than yourself. And catching the fish is the affirmation that you are you are successful at something. Um, at least that's what it is for me. But where I take it now is for all of us that have been fishing, you know, 10, 15, 20 years plus our whole life, you kind of get to a point where fishing is addicting because it never ends, because you're always on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And you're trying to hone different parts of this sport. You know, you do bass fishing for a little while and you feel like you caught a bunch of bass and a bunch of big bass. That's cool. You know, you can do it. What's next. I want to catch a big redfish. All right. You catch a bunch of big redfish. What's next. Now, and then I go on to offshore. I want to catch a black fin tuna and a sailfish offshore I do that. Cool. What's next. Maybe I'm going to scale back to fly fishing. Maybe I want to, you know, a little two pound rainbow trout. And that's cool. You, you focus your efforts into you know, honing that craft and the details are going to being better at whatever that is so that when you're successful at that new thing, it's a whole new level of accomplishment and success. And it's really rewarding. So I like the challenge of it. Um, and Joe, you kind of say like the blank slate idea, you know, you go fishing, you have a bad day one day and you're like, yeah, whatever, I'll go fishing the next day. And I may kill it out there, man. If I go out and I go fishing four or five times and I have a bad day, I am so motivated to kill it on that sixth day. Like I, I will, prepare so much harder to increase my chances of being successful because I want that dopamine because it feels good, man. I want it. I want it right here and here and everywhere. Like I will do whatever it takes to be able to get that. So it definitely is kind of like a, you know, addicting nature. Um, but we love it because it's, it's also very relaxing on the, on the aftermath of it. Once you catch a fish and you kind of sit there in nature and you're like, 
man, I don't hear any crowds. I don't hear any notifications going off, any emails, any anything, nobody's screaming. I just hear birds and mullet jumping and it's, it's pretty peaceful. Hunter, uh, oh, Hunter. Hunter with the best mullet and stash on the whole team. Fishing is so addicting because it's the only hobby where the opponent doesn't judge you for you. If you suck at it, you just suck. <laughs> uh, that's pretty fun. Yeah, so if you guys are tuned in here, this is live interactive. We're all kind of giving our own personal feedback on why fishing is so addictive. But let us know what you think down below. I'd love to hear your feedback and we'll have this as a kind of part of the uh, the podcast if you will and we put all the show notes on there so richard and matt what you say yeah, yeah. it's i think it's it's justin almost took a, a lot of what i was going to say right from me man it's it's uh you know it's something that it's the itch will never be able to completely scratch you know it's uh like it's it's the adventure it's it's the chase um, you know, just he he almost took exactly what I was going to say about, you know, I, I started young with a cane pole in my hand and then I graduated from that to, you know, a rod and reel and then I, you know, a, a Zebco 33 and then I graduated from that to a bait caster and then I chased largemouth bass for a lot of years. Um, and then, you know, one day I bought a kayak to start bass fishing tournaments and then uh my kayak never touched fresh water. Uh, I went inshore and it was all over with. Uh, I caught one redfish and actually something that happened to me really kind of messed me up. I went out my first time in salt water on my kayak and uh, had a sleigh day. I, I caught more fish than a little bit. It was an absolute blast. I caught, you know, uh, my PB uh, uh, black drum, uh, probably eight reds. I caught a slam twice over. I mean, it was a phenomenal day. And I thought it was always going to be like that. So I, from that point on, I've been chasing that kind of day uh, for so long. So um, it's really, you know, you're trying to duplicate, you know, that dopamine. You know, you get it once. You get, you get to ride that wave one time. And, and you're looking for that, that same wave or one bigger to ride again. Um, and, you know, you're never going to be able to catch them all. Uh, ever. And, uh, you know, Lord knows the seven of us have, have tried extensively. Uh, but we, you know, it's just not, it's just not possible, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop doing it. It doesn't mean we're going to stop trying. Uh, that's all we can do because it's, it's the nature of the beast, the adventure and the hunt. Um, it's the connectivity to solitude and nothingness. Um, where, you know, you have absolutely nothing going on, but you in that moment. And if you've prepared everything just right, and if you've done what you needed to do, and you, you know, you know your craft, you, you can, you know, have a, have a pretty good chance of recreating those dopamine moments, you know, but the fact that you went through all of these tasks and tailored the experience, you know, to, to exactly hone it like you do, that's, that's bliss. That's almost nirvana in itself right there, you know, where you've kind of just dialed this in so perfect to where, you know, you get to the point where you can almost call your shots um, and, uh, you know, say, you know, I'm going to go right here and I'm going to hook into a winning fish, you know, and, and, and it's when you, when you get to that, it's, it's, it's something else. And it's, and it's hard to, to, um, turn that loose. Once, once you, you know, get that needle in your arm, man, it's, it's over with, you know, um, especially if you, if it happens for you at a young age, for sure. Uh, but you know, for me, it happened, uh, you know, with my grandfather at a really young age. And, you know, I think the connection to family, you know, that it, that it makes with your loved ones often for, for many of us at an early age that, that really helps it carry over into all uh, into a lifetime thing. Awesome. man! that was a locker room speech minus the part about the needle in the arm. This is drug free zone. Just so everyone's very clear drug free zone. That was awesome. Richard, what about you? And we'll go to Lukey Dukey. Wow. Yeah. So Matt, you definitely hit it, man, but gosh, you know, fishing is something that 
it just meets you where you are. It's crazy. I mean, if you want to go out, you know, Joe, you're talking about the competitive nature and you want to be focused and just, you know, have that laser vision on getting a certain thing or competing with someone, you can do it. Or if you want to go out there and, you know, have a beverage and eat a PB&J and uh, soak some bait, you can have that relaxation. But it's just something that meets you wherever you are, no matter your skill level as well. We were just talking about, you know, Matt, about you can call your shots and that's awesome. And I love doing it, but it doesn't matter if you're brand new into it. You still get that kick of getting that accomplishment because you put in some work to do something. And it's just so rewarding when you get to see that actually play out. But it's also going back to uh, it's not a for sure thing all the time. You know, you are you know going after a wild animal in nature and anything can ever happen. So that keeps the fun in it where it's a little bit unpredictable, you know, and knowing that going into it makes it that much more fun and rewarding, you know, and we've all had days that have been slow, um, more than we want to admit probably, but, you know, the good days when that happens, gosh, it makes you appreciate it so much. Um, so, you know, just being able to have that going in to be able to release whatever's on your mind, your heart, anything, and just focus and get whatever you need out of it. Fishing is something that definitely does that. And that's why, you know, in my life, uh, big things that have always gone on, whether I was super busy sleeping on the ground for, you know, weeks at a time, somehow fishing always was there. I was able to make time to go do it because um, I needed it, you know, it's a, it's a part of me. And I think that's the same for so many other people that have other things going on in their life that they can go and go fish and release some of that, you know, if they need to escape, they can do it there. Um, so yeah, fishing is just something that it's a lifelong learning thing. And every single one of us, I think here, like when we say we learn something every single time we go out, we're not kidding. Like we really, really do. And you would think like, man, you're on the water all this time and you do this, but you really do. Like I said, it's nature, it's wild animals. There's so many crazy things that happen. I saw a flounder jump four feet in the air last week. Like, I mean, it was nuts, you know, like it's just crazy stuff like that you get to see um, and you just never know what nature is going to bring you. So it's always a lot of fun. That's cool. And yeah, I mean, you spent time obviously in the, the military, Richard, and, and I, I know saw some crazy stuff over there in the Middle East. And it, it's it's really neat how many of our veterans like you find peace and even healing on, on the water. Uh, I mean, there's there's been science behind it. And there's obviously a lot of really great groups who are, uh, you know, taking vets out and just getting their mind off, you know, stuff that they went through, you know, losing friends and battle. I mean, uh, it, the list goes on and on and on. And uh, it, it's interesting how the water and, and boating and kayaking and really just fishing in general has uh, been able to help so many people. Justin, I saw you had your hand up like a great student. Yeah, I was trying to be polite. Um, I was going to ask everybody here, how many times have you had a day on the water where something clicked and you had a revelation and it made you realize something really important about your life off the water? Like you caught a certain fish or you experienced something and you realized like, oh my gosh, this is a sign that I need to do something. Like it was just a, an, like an existential experience. Like, man, that reminded me how important this is and I have not given it the focus that it deserves. I mean, I've had many, many moments out there. I had one just a week or so ago where I did something I realized like, wow, I need to, I need to really remember what it's like to put 110% effort into things, you know, and, and apply it to something in life and realize like, wow, fishing is a good way to, block out everything else and realize more about life. Even though you're trying to escape a big part of that, you can't help but realize in the, on the water parts about your life that you don't notice because there's so much clutter. So your, your mind is free and, you, and everything's a lot more clear when you're out there. So I just feel like that's happened to me. I feel like that's probably happening to a lot of you guys, right? That's deep, oh, yeah. dude. That's deep. <laughs> Yeah. I remember the first, I, I remember I had a day like that. It was, it was when I, I actually had started this job and I was still, I, you know, I wasn't definitely one of the good as fishermen as I am now, but like I understood probability wise where you'd find fish, where to look for them. And I'd, I'd employ the tactics 
without like a complete full understanding of the, the ecosystem, understanding like the circle of a marsh and how tides move and bait moves. And I guess getting that, that whole sense of f- fishing is a lot more than just going out and putting out a line. It's also understanding like where you are, understanding the, the lifeblood of that environment you're fishing in, understanding how a tide moves into a specific market. And you kind of see like the wholeness of everything. It's, it's almost like a spiritual experience more than just going out there and, and catching fish. But all those variables I was kind of talking about to see them all work in unison with each other. Um, that, that day that I was fishing, I remember it was the first day that I just had a just a slammer redfish day. I caught like a hundred redfish out of a negative tide hole. I actually made an insider report about it. And I remember that day for me clicked a lot of not just fishing, but like life, how everything's so connected in the way that, you know, the seasons move and just wind period, like everything is influenced by all the natural effects of the world. So just how, how the tide had moved in the marsh that day, how it had put bait there, how it had forced literally every redfish in this entire marsh to sit in this one hole and to see how all those environmental just elements and everything made this one thing happen. I was there to witness it, which is, I'd just never seen that many redfish in one area. And I sat there and plucked them out of that hole for a couple. It was to see all that and have it, kind of come together in a sense of just understanding a little bit more about the world. Uh, you get stuff like that with fishing and it's really hard to put into words um, to see, to see wild things be subject to a specific set of rules like that. It's, it's insane. It's crazy. And that, that's another cool thing is like with each species, you have a different set of rules and you can, you can really go in there and, say, I'm going to just go after trout. I'm just going to go after redfish. I'm just going to go after flounder and take a specific set of rules for a wild thing and just apply those and have a, uh, have a, have a game plan. It's, um, it's crazy to put the natural world into like all these little easy to understand boxes. Love it. One, one, one thing I've found is how you can use fishing to help control stress because we can all get stressed out there on the water, but from my experience, the more stressed out you get, the more things go wrong. And if you just stop and control your emotions and get back to being focused on what you're trying to do, which is catch fish and enjoy your time on the water, you'll have a more productive day. And you can translate that to so many other things in your life. You know, you get stressed out about your work or you get stressed out about your relationship, just, you know, control your emotions. You're, you're the only one that's in control of it. And if you can switch it around and get focused back on what you're doing, it can completely change things. Love it. Luke, you've been quiet. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to, hard to add on. I think, I think every angle has been covered and I, I just agree with the fact that um, without getting into the actual chemical releasing of dopamine, it's just, it's just fun. Fishing is just fun. It's every day's different. So, so they're like, no matter what the next day, something's going to be different. The conditions will never be the exact same. The fish will never be in the exact same spots. And so you just never know what's going to happen. I, I think it's, it's just a, a fun way to go out and just have a guaranteed adventure without knowing the outcome. And, and it's more than just like, like gambling has, again, it's very addictive. People go to the, those little slot machines and just literally, you know, hit the one arm bandit or, or push the button or whatever. And winning is good, but it's that much more, uh, I think, addicting for fishing. The fact that, that we actually do have control over the outcome, at least we have some control over the outcome. The fish obviously don't want to get caught. The wind isn't going to be exactly what the forecast is. The tides might be different than the time before. There's always going to be some some unique factors that we have to 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 face and to and to overcome, at least hopefully overcome. And uh, and so when it does work, it's just that much more rewarding. But even if it doesn't work, there's just just you. It's it's almost a guarantee that something cool is going to happen. You're going to at least see something new. Um, like last week, I had an osprey come down and try to steal one of the fish. Just just some something unique that just. Uh, it's just it's just fun, and uh, and it's one of the it's a relaxing fun as well. So you, if you are stressed. You can go out and fish and know that your your stress level is going to go down, know that you're going to have fun and, and hopefully catch a fish or two. The, just the, the fish catching is just the added bonus to just simply getting out there and enjoying nature in my mind. And But also like gambling, fishing is addicting because 
every time you get in front of the slots or the blackjack table or craps table, it's always like, this could be the big one. Right. I mean, we talked about it with tournaments. You used to do a lot of tournament fishing, Luke, and you're like every cat, literally every cast could be a winning, it could be a thousand dollars. Like if you think about it in that perspective, another example, is what happened to us yesterday. Right. Uh, and I'm sure you guys can all relate to the story I'm about to tell. So we're like doing really long casts. These redfish have been super spooky and I'm just bomb in the slam shady 2.0 and doing a sl- straight retrieve and all of a sudden way way out there redfish big redfish right luke i mean nails it like luke's actually are you sure you had a fish on like it was like a, i felt like i was stuck on the bottom and all of a sudden zzz, and i'm fighting this thing for a while and it somehow spits the hook and guess what i was dreaming about the whole way home and even that evening was that massive redfish that I, we could see it it actually came to the boat and then took off again and I'm like, oh, I cannot believe I lost that one. And guess where I'm going again tomorrow? <laughs> I'm going fishing. So if you're on my calendar for tomorrow morning, you're not anymore. But it's because of that. Like I'm, I, It's so addicting. I'm now taking time off again Thursday morning, wake up at four o'clock to go try to catch, you know, the same type of fish. Whether I do or not, who knows? I'll give you guys an update. But right, it's so addicting because, Matt, you mentioned a trip that was epic where you caught everything and you want to kind of recreate that. There's also days where you lose that big one and you just dream about it and you're like, man, I want to go, I want to go recreate that, but with a different outcome where it's actually in my boat or kayak. Anyone have that story? No, just me dreaming. Great way that happens. Yeah. The longest and drive home ever, right? <laughs> and and the cool thing about that too is is we we had a really good morning. We caught a lot of trout, and then and then the we were going after redfish, and they were super spooky to the point where it's like get, getting frustrated. We could see them, they're waking off. Like literally just look at them wrong and they're gone. Like, like it's it basically before the lure land, they're, they're already out. So super spooky, frustrating. And then that one cast, right? All it takes is one cast, like pulling that slot machine. All it takes is the one, one little pull of that thing. And Joe hooks up with that giant. And that, that was like, that energized both of us. Like the whole mood just changed. And it's just, uh, but either way, it would have been an adventure. Like, like how do you not hook that one? Like, bit, like, man, Hey, we at least, we definitely found the 90 10 zone. We were in the fish. Um, now we just have to be quieter. And, uh, but, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's just so amazing. And I was thinking about that too. Like that was, that was a legit redfish and super shallow water where like, it was like a big V wake and bullet were jumping out as the, as that redfish was running. It was, uh, right, that's it was, enough. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's so, but even though enough. we didn't catch it, <laughs> right, even, even though we didn't catch it, um, it was still fun, right? It was still memory, still added to the adventure, and, and it's just another reason to go out there and and hopefully get revenge uh, tomorrow. I've got a I've got a question. It is one of the best parts of the day when you guys are just getting ready and you're headed to your spot. Like I feel like one of my favorite parts of the fishing day is like if I'm going to a new spot that I've never been to, like that I'm after some big fish at. I'm sitting there drinking my coffee. The sun hasn't even risen yet. I haven't even launched the boat. It's like, you're just sitting there picturing the day and what could happen. The possibility of that six. That's like one of my favorite parts of the day. Cause I just don't like, you don't even know yet, but there's a possibility that it could be your best day of fishing. Yeah. It's the whole going into the unknown. So, um, what are our comments? I'm, I'm still struggling to get all the comment feed. Yeah. I can't see them all at the same time. Oh, here's Mike. Fishing is a great place to relax, no matter if you catch or not. For me, just being on the water is so relaxing. Todd, I have PTSD, 100% disabled vet, which yeah, we discussed. And uh, thank you for your service. And it's one of the things that calms my spirits down, has saved my life many times. I and mean, that's that's powerful. Um, what else here? Scotty, love the feeling of being with nature. So many ways to enjoy from the beach, boating, waiting. That's true. I mean, that right? I mean, you know, Wyatt just got back from filming the beach fishing course and he's, he's like, and, and Wyatt used to be without a boat or kayak now has both. But prior to that, when you were in North Carolina, you were fishing on the beach and a little Creek mouths and using the wading boots more than anything else. And you went back after fishing with Bama beach bomb. You're like, man, I just learned there's like a whole nother world opened up. And I think that's, what's cool too. Luke has mentioned the whole fishing is like a puzzle, like a never ending puzzle, right? Where you 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 kind of want to have some kind of completion right like you kind of want to complete it but you know deep down you're not and and we and see richardson we did a couple courses with him he said the same thing he's like man i'm, I'm learning from you guys he's like i, I learned something new every single time i'm uh, i'm out there and that's part of the goal is the the learning part of it which is addicting just trying to master anything that you know you'll never really completely master it but you're just getting one step closer to kind of 
finishing that never ending puzzle. Um, I like the prep work. Mike says, I like the prep work. Where do I fish? What's my beta choice? What I if the wind that, shifts? I feel that in my soul, Mike, the prep work is so therapeutic, especially for like, for Matt, you'll agree getting ready for a tournament where you're like, this is the best knot I've ever tied. <laughs> this is the best lure selection before I ever get out there. Cause it's it is kind of a gamble right you go out and you're like if you do the prep work and you're that much more successful and you get better at prepping and you get more successful and it just grows and grows that's that's such a good feeling um especially now like a lot of us are fishing new areas right we've never been there before and we don't know if we're gonna go out and you know miss the one good bite we had all day we're gonna go out and crush it and a lot of that has to do with how well you prepare and looking where you're going to go and what you're going to rig and your knots and all those things, that's therapeutic to me. The night before, whether it's inshore or man, now offshore, it's like 10 times the amount of preparation. It's uh, it's super gratifying. And like, it's just nice sitting on the floor in my office. I don't know about you guys, but like, I'm weird. I still sit Indian style on the floor, on the carpet to do all my rigging. And like, I, yeah, Tony's like, yeah, dude, what's up? Um, Over here. <laughs> yeah, right there, dude. Like right here for me. And uh, I don't know why I can't sit in a chair at a table because that feel it feels different than just being on the floor. I don't know. Maybe it's better for my back or something. But uh, but yeah, I feel that man. That's cool. Are you getting about? I've seen Justin <laughs> sitting on his floor getting ready. It's it's he's got all these these bags that like flip out all these vertical jigs, and it's like <laughs> his floor is coated with lures, and he's just sitting in the center, crisscross applesauce, just like switching stuff around it's it's madhouse it's crazy um i uh, love it so, I, I don't know about so you we, but i've now had to wear readers that's the one thing that has changed i like when i'm tying knots up close i used to now something about your 40s everyone i kept hearing that i'm like oh it hadn't happened to me yet all of a sudden one day i was like i can't see if this knot's tied correctly or not Put the readers on who else is with me someone give me an amen on that uh you young bucks over here why you already I have to wear the glasses now. Yeah. So we talked about different, almost like different reasons why people get addicted to fishing. What do you guys think about the social media side of things? Like wanting to get that picture of that 40 inch redfish and that, you know, recognition from people. What do you guys think about that? Mm. Uh, I don't think that's been, that's been covered yet. I haven't seen any comments on that. What do you think, Matt? Matt Neak? Uh, absolutely, man. Every everybody likes to see um to be seen and and rewarded for the hard work that they've put in, or even for a lucky grab of that one arm bandit. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a lucky win or a well prepared win. Uh, a W is a W, and anybody wants to be recognized for it. And uh, yeah, man, there's there's so much madness going on today that you know um. If anybody can can get it can get a little love on a fish picture on some social media, all for it, man. Um, and there's so many other things that people could be doing that um, you know, and I think that's uh, you know, the the recognition is a big part of it, but um, you know, it's it's part of the game, you know. Make sure you blur them pictures though. Oh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the- you're right. I think as humans, we we have this just desire to be recognized regardless of what we're doing and in the attaboys right uh regardless of of what you're doing everyone loves to get you know a a way to go or awesome job um i i found it hard like when we're doing some of our live podcasts in the water like even yesterday we did one early and uh i deep down i kind of wanted to take a picture just being honest uh like i had one really nice trout and i wanted to take a picture of it also like you know, want to keep the show going, if you will, and, and, and get it back in the water safely. And I have to release them afterwards. Like, man, I wish I like, really, we caught so many fish yesterday and I got like one little snook pick and that was it. I was like, man, I wish I would have documented some more of it. One for the attaboys. And two, I like, I like, I like, like in our fishing community, it's kind of my, uh, uh, my, my journal, if you will, of, Hey, yeah, you know, that was a year ago, we were catching all these trout in this, uh, this one area. So I do like to document it for those two purposes, but certainly Tony, the social side of thing. I mean, we're doing a Facebook live, right? We're all social animals and we all like to talk about what we caught and, and, and we all know, regardless if you want to try to deny this, if you have an Epic day 
and you got that money shot on your phone, you're pumped up to get home and share that with your friends and your social circles. I mean, it feels good. Uh, so I, I, I completely uh, agree with that. And of course, you know, I could probably teach a course on how to hold a fish up closer to the camera to get uh, to make it look bigger. Uh, she got that whole aspect of like, man, that guy catches the biggest fish and you actually fish with him like, and these are all little 20 inch dinks. Uh, right. Straight really, elbows. Really, really good at, uh, at taking pictures. And I'm not calling anybody out uh, at all. So can't uh, bend those elbows. <laughs> what else? I think the other thing about pictures, if you think it, uh, we haven't even touched on this one, one, one thing that's really nice about fishing is when you get to take someone else out and put them on fish. And it's like, they don't even know how hard it is just to th someone that's maybe not familiar with like inshore fishing. Like I've got some guys that want to come down this weekend that are from Tennessee and I took them down, you know, they came down here last year and uh, they had an amazing time. And to, to take somebody that doesn't know like how hard that kind of thing is and put them on fish and help them kind of skip the hard part and just have them in the good times and to get like a picture of them when they're like at their happiest, like, I, I, I heard a discussion, I think it was last week about if you take a look at a picture uh, of somebody like at the end of a day of fishing where they're standing around a table where there's like a bunch of fish laying on the table, like everyone's like kind of tired and sunburnt. But like, if you take a picture of somebody like right after they caught that fish, like right before they release it, they're holding it up and they're just smiling because that's the moment that like it all came together that's when you see like some really serious smiles, like people that I know that don't smile. I take them out fishing, put them on a fish. Like I can get them to smile with that fish. It's a, I've seen it happen many times um, to, to get a picture of somebody in that moment. That's, that's one of my favorites is when I get to take a picture of one of my friends that I just put on a fish. Uh, that's, that's definitely one of my favorite parts of fishing. I love it. And kids, right. Getting um, a young person catching their first fish even if it's a little small bluegill I, I get so much pleasure in doing that we have a little dock where i feed the fish almost every day a little bread and you can you can honestly catch them without even any bread on your hook they'll they'll hit a little shiny little hook but these kids they it's they're so cool and you're right Wyatt. they're so pumped up and they want to go home and tell their parents like i just caught a fish it's so awesome like ah because who knows where that'll go right i mean all of us here now get to this for a living because at some point, someone created an experience like that with us, whether it was freshwater or saltwater, doesn't really matter uh, that, that we all had that first fish that we caught that that definitely left a lasting impression. Uh, I love uh, Whoop! I just missed the comment here, George. Oh, gorgeous, George. I'm always a bit closer to my creator out in the water. Absolutely. Carlton. I love it because it is the one thing that will make stress just disappear, melt away. Uh, completely agree hunter with these gas prizes it's definitely a gamble <laughs> uh, yes uh, it certainly is especially marine gas um, best days fishing was definitely with my dad and has given us common bond ever since we'd still talk about the days we spent catching in the cold days pike fishing when even a jack turned the day around absolutely uh, hunter you're definitely the most active person on this uh, entire feed uh, Matt, I feel personally called out for blurring pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. Carlton, I agree what about with the you. Gear side of things. What's that? What about the gear side of things? I know a lot of people get addicted to the wanting the newest and greatest, and you know, upgrading your boats, upgrading your kayaks, rods, reels. I feel attacked. Like <laughs> I, I actually had that wrote down to talk about because that is one of the biggest things for me you know and it goes in with the prep and everything but yeah it's it's um you know having the the next best thing you know even if it ain't the next best thing and 90 percent of the time it isn't but we had to try it though right um you know all these new toys and gadgets that come out that are going to make us better anglers you know just immediately you know uh smart fishing tides aside because that actually will make everybody a better angler overnight but um so other than that, you know, it, the next new it, you know, it's all, we're always chasing the new it, whether it be the fish, the gear, the, you know, the whatever. So yeah, Tony's, Tony's the, spot on, man. We're the brand new Power Prawn Juniors, baby. Oh. That's right. oh. So we just took, we just took these live <laughs> yesterday. Holy smokes. Uh, I, I bought a pack myself. Yes. We all have to buy our own, our own stuff. We use the same insider discounts, but yeah, I think, very likely we broke broke a new record 
Uh, I think even more so than like the original Slam Shady on like first day of sales. Like it was nuts. Uh, that and the Hoss Hook. So if you haven't got yours, get them while you can, because we're going to be out soon, if not already. Uh, this is the, the Power Prawn Juniors. If you don't know, big update. Uh, these are now all made in USA. They uh, come now seven in a pack instead of three for the exact same price. And um, Richard, I mean, you've got some videos here recently on the under the popping cork, just crushing it. Uh, who likes the junior over the over the senior over the big boy? Mostly, Half mostly you? For, for sight fishing. Sight like fishing sometimes, man. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy it's situational for me. Very situational for me. So basically, you need to have both. Yeah. Yeah. At all well, times. At yeah, all but times. I've deep jigged them around jetties and rock walls, and I know why you've done that out there too. The crushes big one crushes it. I mean, it catches anything that's got a tail on out there. I mean, <laughs> everything eats a shrimp. It's crazy. Yeah. That's that's another like why is fishing so addicting? It's like you can use a new lure in a situation you never thought it would work in. To take it for me, to take that power prawn offshore and catch the biggest red snapper I've ever seen and catch cobia, it's like what the heck I'm catching these things with a, a shrimp jig. Like, what is this? It, that's like, it's, you never think of that kind of stuff. And it's just so fun to try new lures, new top waters specifically, and, yeah. and, and just play around with stuff and fine tune to like what you like to do, what you like. There's some lures that are better for certain types of fishing and to play around with all the different types of gear, including your hat. If you're going to do some sight, I know Joe wants to give me grief about this hat so bad. Even, even the clothes, like for I, I don't title. even need to, Wyatt. It, it speaks for itself. I mean, look at, <laughs> look at that. Look at that long brim. You can just get so much good shade if protection ever, when you're. If I get lost at sea, I will just look for your hat and that will guide you. <laughs> it's just a, yeah, it's a bo- hey, is that a bobber? No, it's Wyatt's hat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. If you guys rewind this video, I watched you as soon as I even, because Tony brought it up. And as soon as I actually showed tackle, all of your faces, your emo- your body language kind of uh, changed. It's so funny. We are. We, we're addicted to buying tackle and talking about tackle, tackle talk. Every time we do a tackle, people are like, hey, why do you do so many tackle posts and tackle reviews? Because it keeps working. Everyone clicks yeah. on it. Everyone wants to more, know more and talk about it. I kind of want to take that. So like, yeah. you know, when you love something, you appreciate it. You appreciate everything that goes into whatever that is and making it, whether it be a lure or a hook or rod and reel or braided line or leader, you appreciate the work and the craftsmanship that goes into that product. So that's why, I mean, that's for me, that's why I like talking about it. I'm not one for keeping up with the Joneses. Like if I like nice stuff, it's because I appreciate what went into making that nice thing. There's somebody out there who's crazy smarter than I am and figured out ways to make this that much better than what everybody else is doing. They're an innovator in whatever that is. And I appreciate that to a level where I want to support that, that, that craft. I want to support that project that came to fruition and say, you know what, that deserves to be noticed whether it's an artistic design aspect, like my jigs, why yeah, there's some jigs I may never fish, but they're, you know, they're special to me. Oh my, my dog coming in. Um, but I appreciate the art and the craftsmanship that goes into it. It isn't always just about that thing to help you catch more fish. You can go out and catch fish on a Zebco 303. You don't, you don't need the fancy stuff, but why do we buy it? Because we appreciate it because we like the little things that it offers. And we just like experimenting and trying new stuff. That's what's exciting. Yeah, Justin, that too, a little bit different on that. You know, I'm someone, not sure if you can tell, I like to kind of break the rules a little bit and kind of upset the status quo. And man, being able to get a different lure in a different area and do something completely weird, you know, just like clown car weird stuff and still catch fish <laughs> is so exciting. Like, you know, where people are just so surprised, they're like, I, that will never work and you can prove it wrong. You know, it, it goes to show being in the right place again is. 90% of it, but I mean, it's so much fun to experiment and do things and kind of keep that bug or itch scratched and just kind of breaking the rules, so to speak, of what everybody else is doing. And you can do that with fishing. You can do something completely weird that's only for you and only something that you thought of and is original. And it's cool because it's yours, you know, and then other people will copy it or whatever, but you say, I, I did it first, you know, so it's like fun. hanging my, it's like hanging my rods up on the wall behind me when everyone else has theirs vertical. <laughs> <laughs> right, dude. Status quo, be different. Right I love it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I just think that just goes to the point of, and, and just the fact that so many different things have been mentioned, there's just so many, so many things to be appreciative of a fishing and a lot of it's a progression as well. So like for me, I started off bass fishing. I love bass fishing. Felt like I was pretty good at it. Then got into saltwater, totally new thing, struggled for many years. And I just wanted to catch a fish, right? And so and I, I didn't think that lures even worked. I thought that I had to have live bait. So it was all about catching bait. And then, and then started getting good at that and then started, okay, let me try lures. And then, and it's just a little bit more rewarding catching a fish on a lure than a bait because you actually fooled that fish to eat something that wasn't even real. Right. So it's just that much more enjoyment and then got good at that. And then taking somebody else who's new to fishing, like what Wyatt said, where you can see them having fun, like that at some point that becomes the, I guess the dopamine that, that is really driving it. So it's, it's kind of a progression. And then at some point, like fly fishing or even making your own lures, right? It's just, there's, there's never a graduation. It's a continual quest to, to just have a, a new or unique experience. And there's a million different ways to have it. It could just be seeing something cool, like a whale shark that didn't even involve catching a fish, just something cool you've never seen before. Um, so that's just the, just the, the cool thing about it, especially saltwater fishing. Right? I was, I was pretty addicted to freshwater, um, and then I, then I started learning saltwater where there's a lot more different species. The water's usually more clear, so you can see more things. One cast can be a six inch trout, next cast can be a six foot tarpon. There's just so much just variety of stuff that it's, it's like the most addicting type of fishing I've ever, I've ever done. But, uh, but yeah, it's just such a, such a fun thing to do. And, and I know like certain points were talked about, I think, and, and as far as taking stress away, my like least stress moment ever is you know i've done the preparation which is fun i totally agree with that i like get excited every time like tying knots and, like looking at the weather and tying on the right lures for the weather but it's getting on the water going to spot number one like in between leaving whether i'm i'm, I'm walking while i'm waiting or i'm in the boat going to the first spot or paddling to the first spot like that moment from leaving to spot one to the first cast like that's where like nothing else in my mind matters except for just going and, and starting that that fishing quest so like to me that's like the most like stress-free time ever and uh but but all all throughout the entire thing is meaningful right even like even posting pictures and social media or getting like a really cool strike on camera just like the entire process has just so many different possibilities for something cool to happen and, and, a, and a memory that will be in in uh you know in our minds forever to take place so uh, i think that's a just to me that's a big reason why it's super addicting and probably while I'll never be able to stop doing it. Luke, I, I can agree with you on everything there, except for cast one. Cast one's a little stressful because you don't want to catch a fish on cast number one. <laughs> it's pretty, yeah, you it's have to like throw away from the structure, right? Throw the off. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all saw Tony's first cast curse the other day, right? With the yeah, man. Manatee about uh, flip, his, flip the uh, boat over. It was crazy. It's real. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing good happens when you catch a fish in the first cast. The rest of the day. That was the like, first day I used the new trolling motor I got. And it ran right into that motor. I was like, great. <laughs> uh, have you seen a whale shark, Luke? What are you talking about? You just talking about that one video and that guy, Mikey, remember that guy from Boston? It's a whale no, shark. No, I've seen multiple out there. They're amazing. It's just an amazing animal. It's something you don't expect to see. And But every I've seen three and none have had cobia. So although it's amazing seeing them, a lot of times cobia follow them. And I've had jigs on ready to rock and... So far, my whale sharks have been cobia free, but uh, still cool. That's awesome. Cool. Um, what else, guys? Anything else? I see we're getting close to the hour here. Um, I'll try to log back in here and see if. Um, I think that was all I can see, unless you guys see any other ones that I missed. Looks like a happy birthday to George Layton. I see somebody mentioned that he has a birthday today. Curious George. That was yesterday, I believe. Happy birthday, George. Uh, gorgeous George. George. Yeah, thank you, Carlton. I saw uh, saw your last post there. Appreciate you guys. Big time slam, shady baby. Um, Scotty. Found mo uh, I always look for the best gear at the best price. Found most of the time, less is more. Yeah, I mean, simplifying is, we all say that, and yet we keep going back and just want more and more stuff. Uh, but I have, I mean, yesterday when Luke and I went out and we'll go out again tomorrow morning early, we use the same two lures. I mean, all we used, right. I guess, did you switch it up twice? I used the same lure the whole time. 
all I use is Slam Shaded 2.0. And depending on if it was a jig head or a, a hoss hook. And Luke, you had a moonwalker on. Moonwalker. And yeah, then uh, and then as soon as the sun can't, as soon as I can see my shadow, I switched over to Power Prawn Junior. The junior, yep. So that's it. Just keep it simple. And we fished a lot of different types of areas and uh, caught a lot of fish. So. All right, guys, we'll leave it at that. Uh, everyone just keep Wyatt in your prayers that he finds a new hat, or maybe we'll have to send. He lost his hat is what happened, the unsinkable hat, which is um, really a crowd favorite. And um, I believe we have some more here. I don't think we're sold out, so we'll, we'll have to get you one. I would appreciate that very much. Yeah, I think all of Texas will. Uh, <laughs> unless, to Justin's point, you get lost out at sea, then you'd be like, man, I wish I had that. Right I'll on. save this as the offshore hat. This will be the offshore hat. There you go. <laughs> we could wait till our new ones come in. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, we've been working on a on a hat for Tony. We we started with Tony. It's the first fishing coach we had, and we said, "All right, starting with Tony, we're going to let you design your own hat, and uh, then anyone could buy." So it'll Tony gets the first one, and then anyone can uh, can purchase it. And it I, I want to say it's been going on for like ten months. This whole getting hats the, it that there it is man it's so clean i love it actually pretty dirty but <laughs> no it's just a clean look i love just the black and white american flag such a good looking hat it's been taking forever i feel bad for anyone who's in the hat business and trying to get hats in bulk it's been like good hats you can get some crummy ones but to get great quality ones in bulk it's been really really tough uh, and custom so uh it'll happen soon we're told it'll be this summer and uh, speaking of other cool things coming, I teased in the beginning, the Smart Fishing Spots app, the whole software system, this is going to completely change how you do your pre-trip planning and how you find the fish. Um, and, and wait till you see version two. If you haven't seen the podcast, we're not going to go into a whole big spiel about it, but watch it. It, it was, uh, we did one last week and the week before about some new software. You'll see exactly what we're talking about. We show everything we're doing. We're going to film another one. I believe early next week. And then the next week it should be out at least for beta testers for our insider members. And uh, you'll understand real quickly why we're calling it the all in one app. We've taken every app you could possibly use from weather and wind and tides and currents and radar and sonar, everything you can imagine and brought it all into one place, all at your fingertips and uh, completely free to insider members. But it also does some really cool stuff where it starts predicting where you should be fishing, what day you should fish, the exact tide to catch fish in your area. Anywhere there's a tide station, we have all that data coming in and we're putting it through a crazy Willy Wonka machine and it spits out the exact best time and, uh, and time for you to go fishing. So it's pretty, uh, pretty stinking awesome. And version two that'll be here later this summer is going to be like next level. Like uh, I, I'm, I feel bad for some of the companies out there that try to design and, and sell apps and some navigation stuff it's it is next 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 level so that's all it the insider club if you're not a member what the heck are you waiting on someone to grab you by the hand and show you exactly where to fish every week because that's what we do hi -oh! that's at saltstrong.com and of course now with thirty thousand members we hit thirty thousand members recently we're able to give you guys some really awesome discounts on all of the best tackle and uh, so uh, another way to save you time and money. And of course, all these fishing coaches, and we're missing one, right? We're missing Pat. Um, they're out there fishing in a new spot every week and filming everything. I think it's one of the coolest things is, uh, is seeing these insider reports, these on the water reports, where uh, once again, these guys go fish a new spot, document the whole thing, do the pre-trip plan, and even the post-trip, which is kind of like game film. I mean, it's how you get better at any kind of sport is uh is is all right what did i learn from this what would i have done differently maybe i wish you to pick this spot instead of that and that's uh, a really great way to dial in the trends and recreate the same kind of trips in uh and then your in your area and then luke every friday morning curates everything that's been going on in 10 minutes or less so a few current members i've talked to some people are like oh i didn't even you guys did that and they watch like holy smokes this is awesome like it's something you could listen to or watch on the way to the ramp uh, on friday morning and if you just Watch that alone. You'll know more than 98% of all the weekend warriors out there. So that's the smart fishing game plan every Friday. So uh, anything else, guys? Did I missed anything? That was a mouthful. I think you nailed it. That was great. Yeah, you guys know that was fun. Uh, so appreciate all everyone who joined live. Uh, this will be a podcast. So if, uh, if you join live, then 
you'll you'll probably say, wait a minute, uh, a week from now when we actually take this live as a podcast on YouTube, be like, I've I've seen some of this stuff. So if you missed some, we covered some of uh, some some fun uh, fun things in this. And if uh, if you just caught the tail end, definitely go listen to the beginning. Otherwise, we appreciate you guys. Stay tuned for some really cool stuff with the smart fishing spots, some new tackle, potentially some new colors uh with uh with some specific lures that's all i will i will say and even a brand new lure we we teased that yesterday in a podcast that we uh we filmed a a brand new mold that we've been creating for a while uh it's it's one that like we could patent kind of a uh, cool still very simple uh but enough uniqueness that we could actually patent this thing really 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 cool so stay tuned for that one and uh we will see you guys in the next episode peace we out whoop, whoop. thanks guys good job